Hey everyone, and welcome to episode 33. My name is Keshav and I'm the producer. Today's episode is with Riley McCunn, who is a senior accountant with Deloitte Canada in their Ottawa office and a successful 2021 CFE writer. She's also a 2019 Dow grad where she majored in accounting and she joined Sam to discuss her approach to studying for the CFE, uh, what her plans are now that ultimately she was successful in writing it, and also shared some advice for third and fourth year business school students who are thinking about majoring in accounting. Thanks and enjoy this episode. Good afternoon, good evening, Riley McCunn. Welcome. Hello. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna jump right in. Um, here's my icebreaker question. What is your favorite seat on an airplane? Definitely the window. The window. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Me too. Me too. I thought I was like, she's either gonna say like the window or she's gonna get like really specific. I was like, maybe Riley's like, I like the front. <laughs> Uh, like, if I would have to pick definitely the front so you can get off first because you just want to leave at that point but yeah definitely window lean on something to sleep yes yeah that extra like little little gap um so one of my colleagues was saying that it like gives you insights into who the person is if they want window or aisle because um, like the person in the window respects their own space and doesn't mind bothering other people whereas the person in the aisle is overly accommodating and I was like I don't know. I'm like, maybe. And I was like, maybe I, honestly though, if somebody was like, I like the middle, I was like, I feel like that would say a lot about them. Cause who yeah, likes the middle? Who likes the middle? No, not me. <laughs> but I am a window. I am a window person. And I'm like, at worst, if it's five hours, I will get up once during that time. And that's it. Yeah. I think about that for sure. I'm like, oh, I shouldn't, if it's like a short flight, I'm like, I yeah. don't need to go to the bathroom. I don't want to Oh yeah. It. Short flight. I'm like, there's no beverages. There's no liquid. Like I'm sitting down and I'm hunkering down and I'm exactly. using my extra inch and a half. Okay. <laughs> we are on the same plane. This will go good. All right. Riley, how do we know each other? So I was one of your students, um, in accounting and I also marked for one of your accounting classes. Yeah. And you were part of the group that in hindsight, I call the guinea pigs. I'm sorry. You were a part of my first, you're my first like fourth year class. Yeah. We were talking um, right before we started um, playing and you were in the same cohort like group as Zach, who's been on the podcast, Steph, Julia, um, and throughout the years, I've been able to keep in touch with them as well. And it's so lovely that I've been able to keep in touch with you. Um, and yeah, you are also my marker, like you mentioned for cost. And I'm actually meeting with a new team of markers on Thursdays. So it's, it's comes full circle and then it keeps going around a little bit more, but yeah, thank you. That was again, my first cost marker team too. <laughs> um, how was it anyways, seeing kind of the behind the scenes after kind of being in a class with me and then getting to see kind of the behind the scenes of the marker. Was that, you know, was that weird, different? Was that like, kind of like, oh, okay. Like this is the other side. Or was it kind of same old, same old? Cause you had been a marker for other profs, I believe. It's kind of what I expected because I feel like you were very like you're transparent. You're like kind of the same that you treat the students that you would treat someone that you're working with. Like you're very open and uh, like nice and communicative. So it kind of was the same. I was no no shocks or anything. It was great to work with you on and see you on like what, different kinds of like in a student way and in like a working relationship. Oh, thank you. Um, and likewise, like it was great to have those kind of multiple levels. Um, and yeah, like students are. They're really like without students, uh, A, the job would suck and B, like there'd be no universities. So students are the biggest client base. <laughs> and um, yeah, so I'm, I'm glad that the intentions come through. Cool. So we met in, in that first kind of cohort and then you went off and you graduated. And where, where did you go from there? So after I graduated, I started that September at Deloitte, um, which I'm still there right now. And I'm working in audit private out of the auto office. Nice. Yeah. Nice. And how was it? Um, how was it for you working and studying? And when you graduated, it was. Um, am I okay to say the year? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It was 2019. So this was um, the year before. Uh, you know, before you would have been the last year that we could actually do the full grad, the full splitty thing, the full everything. Cause then March of 2020, um, there was a shutdown. So I want to hear a little bit about your perspective because we've had on people recently who graduated in 2020 or even graduated last year. So how was it for you to graduate? And then what did you do that summer? And then when did you start at Deloitte? 
restart. So I'm so grateful that I graduated before the pandemic hit. Like I could not be happier that I got to experience grad. Like I remember I wasn't going to go to grad weekend. I was back in Ontario. Like I loved Dow, but I was like, it's just graduation. And I ended up going and it was the best weekend ever. And I'm so glad I got to show my family, like where I lived all those four years, we all went to Splitty. So I'm just really thankful that we got to, I got to do the full graduation experience that accounting kind of offers. So like that was great. Um, and then a summer after I knew I was uh, I was starting full time in September at Deloitte. So I kind of took a break. Um, I hung out a lot. I got a job, my first restaurant job. Oh, hostess. yeah. Nice. Yeah. It didn't last long. I think I only worked like a month or like six <laughs> weeks. It wasn't really for me. So I just kind of like hung out the rest of the summer and I was like, I honestly it's never going to be able to do yeah, sure. exactly. Like for when you went back to like work at um, Deloitte, you were probably like, okay, this is good. very different. Yeah. Ex- and I'd never done it. So it was kind of nice to like experience it. But Actually, yeah, here, I served during university and um, a little bit and it was always my backup job if EY was too mean to me. Uh, but it, it helped me kind of I was like, do you want baked potato, mashed potatoes, french fries, rice or mixed vegetables? What kind of mixed vegetables? Summer squash or carrots? Like it's fabulous and because you feel like you can kind of put up with a lot but at the same time it gives you appreciation like I would get off work and be exhausted but my feet wouldn't hurt as much you know so it's it's good that you went out and and got that experience and also I just want to mention um you know this uh, for the people that are listening to this that maybe didn't get to go to grad or are concerned about their own I just want to really frame the fact that you're grateful because there are a number of things that you haven't been able to experience since so you know just reinforcing hey when you have an opportunity take it because we don't know um and also um I would definitely have an open invitation to any student past present or like future grads when we do get to have the next like full grad splitty stuff I'd say we all do it like just have like yeah, just four three four yeah bring it on big party no, I think that's a great idea because it's worth it it's definitely a good time and you'd be so much more grateful to uh, being able to do it once like this whole pandemic's over so yeah but yeah, so yeah, I got to experience that. And then I just kind of hung out. And then I started at Deloitte in September. And I've been there since September of 2019. Nice. Okay. So how was it? Did you do, first of all, your path to become um, uh, to the CFE first? Um, did you do the modules? Or did you do a grad school program? Or what was your path? So I went with the the PEPs so or the modules. Um, when I was graduating, it was a time where like the master programs were becoming a lot more popular. Like a lot of my my uh, uh, peers were going into them, and I was like, I felt like I I should, but I was like at a point where I was really tired of school, and I was like, I don't know if I can put in my full effort right now. Like I think yeah. I need a break. So I decided to take the module path and like, I don't regret it. Um, I ended up at the same spot as everyone else at the end of the day. Um, It was a different kind of work. Like I was working and studying. So that was something I needed to adapt to. But yeah, no, I thought it was uh, the the bright decision in the end still too. Yeah. And it's funny because um, I was actually a little bit surprised on how many students did start taking the shift because I'm from out West and the default is you know, um, most people would do the PEP modules. Um, This was before U of A kind of got their program because for me, it was too expensive to go to Saskatchewan because you wouldn't be working. You would have two summers there and it was a full master's and it was more tuition. I was like, I can't afford it and I can't move to Saskatchewan. So there really were limited kind of opportunities. So then, and then I taught in CPA PEP and I believe in the program and I, you know, develop content from the uh, program. So when I came to Dal and people would be like, oh, I'm going to grad school at like U of T or Queens. I'd be like, I'd almost be like, but our PEP program is so, it's so good. <laughs> and so what I like is that there are honestly, the PEP program is good. You know, all the, all of the programs that I've written uh, letters for students and seem to go through U of T, Queens, uh, U of A, U of S, you know, I personally know some of the program directors, like they're fabulous. So it's really just like you said, what is the best option for you? And if you can't put in your full effort, take that rest. So good. Kudos to you. And you don't have to answer this because it puts you in a, in a particular spot, but I just want to leave this nugget for some of the students out there who maybe are figuring out modules or grad school. If you were a boss and you had a student who had nothing to do all night and you had another like student or, you know, first or second year who had um, CPA modules to do at night who would you put the extra work to? Anyways, I'm just putting it out there that while you might think that you have all this extra time because you're not working and studying, 
you might be also seen as somebody who, you know, did a good job and whose reward is more work or not. You never know. Okay. So you found it manageable. How did you kind of structure your time working and studying? It was hard for sure because um, I was getting back into the swing of being like a full-time job. I hadn't been working full-time since my co-op really. So um, most nights, because I really like to have like my weekends. So after work, I would kind of block off my schedule and tell, let my managers know like if an exam was coming up, like I can't work these nights, like it's just I need to study. And they were really understanding, which was nice. So right. during the week I would, and then I would dedicate like one night, one day of the weekend. Um, and I would just make sure to be consistent with it and like keep on top of like the due dates and the cases that came up. So, yeah. Yeah. That's actually sounds a lot like what I did. Um, I would meet a friend at a cafe on a Saturday and, you know, try to have like a drink or like a white chocolate brownie or something. And, um, yeah, try to have Sunday like off and work throughout the week. And yeah, you just, just little bits, like you said, be consistent and you have, um, you know, you have a workshop or two for core one. Um, so you get to meet a person in person or virtual, you have weekly assignments and practice cases. So you have those deadlines to kind of keep you accountable. Yeah. And you could kind of work at your own pace. Like if you finish one early, you could always submit another one early. Like that was kind of nice. If I had, wasn't as busy, if I had free time, so I would kind of do that. So the flexibility was there. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Um, so how do you use accounting in your current gig? every day. <laughs> I like, how do I not day. use it? <laughs> yeah, how do I not use it is a better question. Um, I'm an audit. So I'm auditing clients every day. I'm looking in the CPA handbook almost every day, like looking at like disclosures and all that. It's like, it's a part of my everyday life for sure. <laughs> yeah. I'm always right. thinking about it. So we take the box, like this yeah. stuff that you learn in university, the stuff that you learn in CPA, it's, it's applicable. The skill set yeah. is being used. <laughs> oh, for sure. And I'll like think back to like the class that I like got it. Like that was, it was initially taught. I got learned that and I was like, oh, wow, this is relevant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're, you know, it's a really good point. There's a lot of trust in there. It's like, yeah. I'm pretty, like when you're learning it, I'm sure it's like, I'm pretty sure this will be relevant, but I'm not <laughs> like, I don't know. So it's yeah. nice to have those, like, um, those circle back moments. Exactly. Okay. So you started in the fall and that's when you did core one. Yeah. And then core two, the following spring. Yeah. And then did you do licensure? So tax and insurance? Yes. Which one did you do first tax or insurance? I did tax. I, yeah, I did tax because it was like, I was rolling off a busy season yeah. at the time. So I figured like, I was still kind of busy. Um, oh wait, no, I did assurance. Sorry. Cause I was rolling off a busy season and it's I'm in audit. So it's yeah. kind of like second nature, the course. So I figured it'd be a little easier. And then in the summer when I wasn't really busy at all, I did tax. Okay. Oh, and then, and then the fall you had kind of off. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Cause that's okay. Perfect. Um, and then the following spring you did capstone one. Yeah. And then capstone two in the summer. And then you wrote this past September and tell me what happened in December. I found out that I passed the CP. <laughs> um, Very exciting um, moment. Fabulous. Yeah. I mean, whew, like, was it like happiness? Was it stress relief? Was it like, what did it feel like? Like the biggest weight off my shoulders because I wrote in September, I had to wait till December to find out. I also work at a firm where everyone knows that you're waiting. Yeah. And everyone knows if you're going to pass or not. So it's stressful in that sense. And it's just like, you're always thinking like, what if, like, what if I do have to rewrite the next year? Like, how am I going to do that? So the fact that I can kind of know like where my future, what my future holds now and like where my career can go is such a relief. So definitely. Knowing what you know now, knowing how it felt to write in September and wait until December and that it was a favorable result, what advice would you go back and give Riley um, for the summer leading up to September that maybe you didn't think of to, to tell her or that nobody told you? In the summer leading up, um, I would honestly just say like, keep working, but don't overwork. Like that's kind of yeah. what I'm trying to think. Like I kept being like, if I would go home on a night where I was done studying, I'd be like, well, why am I not studying? But then I need to remind myself, like, you need to realize that don't overstudy because that's not going to help you either. Like, do the most, but like, you put in all that for you can at the end of the day. So like the results are the results and you'll just have to deal with it going forward. Yeah, I like that. <clears throat> kind of giving yourself like 
both permission and also reinforcement. Like you have a study schedule, trust the process, work the process. Um, people who design this process, uh, not their first rodeo. Um, and to trust that because yeah, more is not more. So don't, don't go, <laughs> don't go um, sit down and beat yourself up and work nights and weekends. Like that's not the time for it. Um, and then did you know, like, how did it feel walking into the exam um, after putting in, you know, your best effort all summer? How did it feel walking in? I kind of had the mindset where I was like, I personally think I put in all the work that I could. So like what happens moving forward is what happens. Kind of just tried to accept that to kind of calm my nerves because it was really nerve wracking when you're standing outside a hotel room and there's like a hotel and there's like 200 kids lining up to get in and everyone's talking about it. And you're just like, I can't like discuss it. Oh, so like, to kind of like myself, you put in I'm the like, headphones, <laughs> literally <laughs> like at the end of each day, when you hear people talking about it, you're like, please stop. <laughs> <laughs> um, so some, there's, um, an interesting opinion. Some people say the CP is like your easiest study days because they're the one they're the cases that you don't have to debrief. Other people would argue uh, vehemently against that statement. Where do you land? I would say like, yeah, you don't debrief them, but then you wonder like, well, then how did I actually do? Like I've, I've always like a week later, I had completely forgotten what was on each case. And me my too. coworkers would ask me and I was like, I have no clue if I did that. Couldn't tell you. Like, so like that's kind of, and you always kind of wonder, like, yeah, I passed, but I'm you don't know how you did because you didn't debrief the case and they didn't tell you. So it's like good in sense, because like I feel like I could learn a lot from it if I knew what I did bad or not. But you got to a point where it's like, well, you did good enough. So it <laughs> that's all that really matters in the end. So I would say like it's probably one a harder one, but in the middle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's all yeah. Um, there was a manager who went and marked the UV the year that I wrote and she came back and was like, oh, like they couldn't talk about it because you signed a bunch of forms. But she did say, oh, I did the, let's just say, she's like, oh, I did the paragliding test. And I was like, it was a day three, like equivalent. So everybody had written it. When she said it, I was like, I don't think I wrote that test. Like I, and then for the next month, I was like, what if I missed a case? What if I didn't write that it? That happened to me. <laughs> so nerve wracking. <laughs> So nerve wracking, but Hey, um, hard work pays off. Um, Dal undergrad CPA pet modules, you work the process and here you are on the other side. So before we get into, um, what are your future plans or what kind of things are you considering? Uh, what do you like to do for fun? Cause right now, you know, I know you're staring down, um, the, the lens of another busy season. Um, but this will be one of the first times after the busy season that you're not working and studying. So either what are you doing now and what do you like to incorporate day to day for fun? And then what are you looking forward to, um, for fun in the future? So yeah, it's kind of nice that I have a lot of free time now. It's different. Like this September was the first one where I'm not studying and I was like, what do I do at night? So I definitely had to adapt some new hobbies. Yeah. Um, I like hang out with my friends a lot. I go to the gym consistently because I find that like really helps relieve my stress with like just my, my job and such. Yeah. Um, I hang out with my family. My parents have dogs. So I like to go home and walk them when we're in lockdown. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's kind of like a nice activity to do but yeah there's not really much to do right now but I'm looking forward to in the summer like going to my cottage more and like hopefully traveling because yeah. I'll have more free time so that'll be good those are kind of what I do those are those are great absolutely great what kind of dogs um an old English bulldog and a Arendelle oh yeah amazing amazing yeah. just the noises anyways so cute <laughs> yes. no sneak attacks on that one mm. <laughs> no. you're so loud <laughs> love it all right uh so okay um what future plans um or options are you considering career-wise um or just in general like where you've earned your cpa your months are either coming up right around the corner or right around the corner or are already passed. Um, so you're either a quote CPA elect or a CPA, <laughs> um, CP qualified. Um, yeah. What's on your horizon? What are you considering? So one of the main reasons I did want to join a big four was their international opportunities. So now that I have my CPA, I'm going to try and utilize that to the most. And I'm trying to work on getting a transfer within my current job. Uh, looking at Deloitte uh, London office potentially so there are so many options and like they're so supportive for transfers they really like encourage them 
So that's kind of my goal right now. It's what I'm working on. Nice. Hopefully that in the next like year I'll be there. So that's the plan. That'd be fabulous. And I, things have changed since I've gone through and maybe they have, maybe they haven't. What, um, are they still called secondments? So they used to be, but now they're called now, like the way my firm does it is you have to actually transfer. So like you have to like leave the the firm in the country you're in and then you get rehired, but then like you get, you're able to join back once like the, the contract's over, but yeah, it's oh, called right. transfers now. Transfers. And yeah. um, what are like, what kind of length are you looking at? Is it like six, 12, 18 months or like what? So the minimum is two years. What? Yeah. Riley, <laughs> so much has changed. Wow. Know, this is good know. to know. I think that's why it's a transfer because there's yeah. like, I feel like in the past, they were bringing these people in for six months. It's like, you only learn so much in six months. Oh, I think it's like when you... solid two days to find out where the bathroom and the lunchroom is, right? Exactly. So, yeah. so if you had people coming in and out every six months, it'd be kind of hard. So yeah, it's two years. So nice. that would be my minimum. <laughs> Hopefully I like That'll it. be really good. Cause then you'll get it. Yeah. It turns into like, you get both the vacation at the beginning right? Mm-hmm. But then you also get like the lifestyle and you get to say, okay, this is how I experience things. And then you don't feel guilty if say you live in a place that's a hub like London and use it to travel to other places. Exactly. Exactly. That's definitely what I will do if I can, but yeah. Fabulous. Well, it's wonderful that, um, that these doors are, that you've opened these doors for yourself and that you've already, what are we like a month and a half past or not even. And already there's all these things that are coming, coming through. Thanks. Um, all right. So a uh, question from a student, um, which I thought is very interesting, but it's good because this one sometimes goes different ways. Um, do you regret pursuing your CPA? If you would have asked me this like three months ago, I probably would have said yes. <laughs> but now that I've passed, I do not regret it at all. It was worth it. Like the stress the being like feeling like you're still in school and working for two years after when all your friends have graduated, like is it's so worth it in the end. I like, you don't realize until it actually happens, like all the doors having like these three letters after your name can really open for you. Like um, people will be reaching out job recruiters all the time now. Like it's just so you can really, you have such a, like so many options now and you can really find something that you thoroughly enjoy like doesn't have to be audit specifically but like there's so much within having your CPA that you can do and within accounting that it allows you to do so no I don't regret it at all cool it's um (sighs) going through a firm and realizing like the stress that not just firms but like industry and just working and studying um however you go through the CPA path like it's going to be stressful and similar to you, I had friends who um, weren't doing that, you know, graduated, weren't doing that. Um, I went through a breakup uh, during my study time. Um, he said, you never want to go to the pub on Sundays. And all I can say is like, I always want to go to the pub. Like, are you kidding me? And I was like, but I have like this thing, it's called a goal. And, and so, you know, that's one of like the indications of, listen, you don't have to like it, um, but you know, I just want to support. So there's some, you know, difficult uh, decisions, but as far as like one of the best moves that I can make in my twenties, it was investing in myself and investing that time and kind of saying, okay, because now, um, like you said, yeah, for myself as well, like the day that I found out um, recruiters and people emailing and people LinkedIn and it's just, it's fabulous. And it's nice to know, Hey, I'm at the firm or I'm where I'm at because I want to be and I want to learn. I want to grow. And it's that sense of like empowerment and any sacrifice that you made to get yourself there. It's nice to see that pay off in a relatively short amount of time. Like it's relatively short, right? Extremely. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the second it's like they recruiters get word of it. They see it on LinkedIn. They'll be messaging you all the time. So it's a quick turnaround. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Fabulous. So what advice do you have? You no, know, one of the reasons why I was thrilled that you said yes to this, and we talked about this before we got on, is giving back to current Dow students, which I know you would normally do and be inclined, but having this urgency to do so now, given that we are in this precarious time where there's online learning, then there's in-person. So first off, just for anybody who isn't maybe aware of this, but the PEP modules are all online, minus um, some in-person, um, two day week, two day, pardon me, every module, uh, workshop, correct? Yeah. So you had kind of in-person Dal undergrad, 
and mostly virtual um, CPA education, CPA education, so post-grad. Um, so knowing what our students are going through now, they've been in person, they've been online, they've been like bounced back and forth maybe. And now they're in their third year, possibly their fourth year, and they're looking at what next, what now. What advice do you have um, for those third and fourth year management learners? Um, I feel like if you're kind of on the edge of whether you want to like major in accounting or not, I feel like even just doing the major and getting the undergrad in it can keep your options open because if later on you decide you want to do the PEP program, it's kind of nice. You already have the courses. So if you're definitely on that kind of spectrum, like lean toward, you might as well do it. Um, so, cause that kind of keeps doors open in the future. If you change your mind, because I've seen people like get um, a Dal undergrad and then they didn't major in accounting and then they wanted to do the PEP and they have to take all these other courses. So Thinking about that, I would definitely can just consider it just on the safe side. Uh, well, when it comes to like- Cutting you oh, off, how long do you think that, because um, I have a general idea, but if somebody did an undergrad and say like finance or um, just a general degree and then wanted to do the PEP modules, do you know about how long it would be? Um, I think those... it would be, you could probably do it in a year, year and a half, but it's quite a few courses because in third and fourth year, we take a lot of accounting courses. Yeah. So like if you're working too, it's just like, I know someone that did it while they were working and it, it took them a while. Like it I think it took them three years Yeah, because it's a lot it, of time. It, yes. It's, it's a lot of time. So I think that's really good advice um, that you're giving is like not do accounting no matter what, like we're not selling the Kool-Aid, but we're like, Hey, if you're on the fence, like you can do a CFA um, level one, two, and three with a Dow accounting undergrad, but you can't do a CPA PEP program with a finance undergrad. You like you know, without taking additional courses for a year, year and a half, two years, three years, if you're working. Yeah, exactly. So definitely think about like your future and where you want to be. And then I guess when it comes to like online stuff, I would still try to keep like study partners. Like that's what I did throughout my pet modules. I've worked with my coworkers. Like even if it was like meeting over Skype, yeah. we would like just kind of, we discuss the cases, like keeping, like you having a study partner, even when this is all virtual, it's easier said than done, but definitely helps have some support that someone understands that they're going through the same thing. It's like, yeah, you have your friends, but they don't really kind of get what you're doing. So <laughs> why, are you, why don't you want to come to the pub? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> like they don't understand. <laughs> These other people are like, let's go talk about amortization for three hours. And you're like, yeah. okay, <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> cool. Um, hey, do you, um, when you worked at Deloitte, was it, did you do all of your co-op terms there or how did you? I actually didn't do a single one of my co-ops there. Yeah. So my first co-op was in, uh, at Grant Thornton, actually in Halifax. And then my second and third, I moved to a smaller firm uh, within Ottawa called Welch. Nice. Yeah. So, but I knew I wanted to work at a big four. So um, I applied. I didn't have the co-op experience, but I still applied and ended up working out. Oh, that's fabulous because sometimes students will say, like, I'm really interested in this kind of accounting, either industry or a small public company or a large public company. And they're just, they're concerned though, that, you know, a decision now in their first co-op will impact their co-op decisions later on. And so I would say that um, the co-op or pardon me, the job market was, um, there was definitely fewer options available when you graduated. And so the fact that you were able to utilize your skill set, communicate effectively and get a job when you didn't have previous co-op experience, that just speaks to the fact like, listen, you're not pigeonholed. You're not a new grad in pigeonholed. Like you're not, <laughs> you know, it's, it's very hard to, um, in my opinion anyways, and correct me if I'm wrong, but like to pigeonhole yourself. Like I'm on my third career with one skill set. I didn't get my master's until like two or three years ago. And I got a job like faculty in academia, right? Like your skill set, how you can communicate, how you can empower yourself and the avenues that you take yourself and, you know, luck and skill and timing uh, come into play, but you're never like, you're never screwed if you, if you take one co-op over another. Exactly. I, I know myself, I felt like when I was applying for co-ops and I was working at not the big fours, I felt a lot of pressure because a lot of your peers are. And I was like, well, in the end, I do. That's where I want to be. And like, you just got to keep trying, keep applying and like, it'll work out in the end. So yeah, yeah, it's definitely, it's a bit of pressure too, especially in accounting. Everyone wants to work at the big fours and all of that throughout their co-ops, but like your co-ops are just ex or your experience or your starting point. So yeah. I would also say the really cool thing that I've seen over the last, oh gosh, like since I, I was designated, so I wrote in 2010, um, is just with the CPA program. So with the merger, 
there are good opportunities in industry. There's great opportunities at oh, um, government. So, you know, Auditor General, um, CRA, sure. big four, medium size. So, so some of the medium sized companies are have some big international presence. And, and some of the smaller companies are providing some fantastic resources. So, I agree. yeah, so it's an exciting time. For sure. Um, and, and yeah, I, I know how it is to get into the, um, to when you see your friends having, not having things, but like, you know, you hear the buzz and you have this. And what I would just say is that to anybody who, um, like, for example, if you weren't interested in the work or you didn't want to pursue international opportunities, just have that like discussion for yourself. Like you did by picking the pet modules, right? You had a bunch of friends doing some programs and you're like, I am, I am not going to be putting hundred percent in this. <laughs> and so like, kudos to you. What advice would you have to students who, you know, here they have that little voice in their head where they're like, I want to do this. And all their friends are like, this is what you have to do to be successful. How do you help like them reconcile that? I make a lot of pros and cons lists when I'm trying to make a decision in my life. I just like put it on a piece of paper and kind of like, I make it over like a couple of days. Like I'll think of a pro, I'll think of a con. And um, then I look at it and I'm like, well, let's see, like, these are the facts now. And like, and I try really not to feel pressured by the people around you. It's obviously harder in university when like usually like your group of friends are like they're in the same program as you they're all doing something together so you just have to think about yourself at the end of the day and like where you think you would excel the most and like what would be best option for you just because everyone else is doing it doesn't mean it's the right path for you yeah I agree um and I ask you this because at 21 I was <laughs> <laughs> I was a poster child of like, I was, I was competitive for the wrong reasons. Uh, somebody's like, oh, it's hard to get a job there. I was like, I'll show you. <laughs> like, like I, was, I am much happier with the human that I am at 31, um, that I became at 31 than I was at 21. Cause it was definitely, um, I always say that I'm trying to make the podcast. Like, I just like, okay, younger self, if you, if you have, them. <laughs> right. Cause it's hard, right. There's a lot oh, of stuff sure. going on so many influences like out there so yeah <laughs> all right um so do you listen to any like books or podcasts or you know are you like what's on your spotify i honestly listen to music that's yeah. kind of what i do i don't really listen to many podcasts um i find it because i listen to music while i work so i just listen to music all the time i have yet to get into a good podcast but if you have any recommendations <laughs> oh I, I went through a binge in September for um, well, like August, September for Cal Newport's um, deep work, but I don't necessarily recommend it to you, which I feel bad saying, but he's a prof. So I feel like I'm getting a lot of like inside prof stuff because he's from Georgetown and he did his PhD at MIT. Um, but he's also a productivity specialist and an author. So I find like, I don't know, I'm interested in his stuff. And I kind of like that he has this like geeky spin on like time management and boundaries. And then he also like talks a bit about like publishing and like the teaching and like how to balance things. So I, for me, I guess my advice um, for if you're looking to get into podcasts or if you're not, that's cool too. But if you are like, just like sample a bunch of stuff. And when you find a person I don't know, just, I had it be like my background noise for when I was like cleaning or like walking or like doing stuff. And then I kind of was like, oh, this is great. And now I listen to him like once every few weeks or whatever. And it's, it's nice, but like, yeah, I went, <laughs> I definitely got like immersed. <laughs> so weird. Hey? <laughs> listen to this prop like talking about, <laughs> oh, and, and like, I don't agree with everything he says. And I think that that's okay. And he also like, in school with that so you find your people right like anything else you but I definitely <laughs> sampled like a lot of a lot of things Spotify is great for that I don't know they are not a paid sponsor for this podcast this podcast <laughs> <laughs> is not sponsored <laughs> if they want to oh my goodness all right um big big question here um this is one that I like to ask all my guests because it gives a bit more insight into you and it's one of the the wrapping up questions but Riley what is your definition of success? My definition of success may like first thing that comes to mind is happiness. Like to be, if you're happy in your life, like you can really like be successful and like fulfillment through like life relationships and your jobs. Like if a job isn't fulfilling. You're not probably, you're probably not that successful if you're not feeling fulfilled. Like not everything is about like 
how much you get paid or like your title. It's a lot about like how you see your job and like how you feel doing it. So definitely like, yeah, happiness in your career and like it thoroughly enjoying what you do every day. I would say that's success. Totally. And it's weird, like with fulfillment, um, because fulfillment, um, I kind of see it as that does include the struggles that does include frustration. Um, and it's like having that support to come like overcome that. For sure. Yeah. yeah you definitely um, need support from your coworkers and your managers and all of that. Yeah. It's, um, it's not, not an easy job. So like kudos that you can, can, yeah, just recognize that, you know, you can create this integrated life of work, friends, you know, self, and, and it can all be happiness. And that happiness isn't this thing that has to start at five o'clock and stops at, you know, 9am. No, I agree for sure. Um, and I think when, when this podcast is released, it'll be released, um, really close to one another one, um, that actually had a very similar answer to your definition of success. And I'm, I've got to say that one of the coolest things about me starting at Dal in like 2018 is getting to like, yeah, I'm the prof, but I learned so much from you guys. Like it's, it's insane. It really is a two-way street. Um, and just seeing, seeing a lot of the kindness, seeing a lot of, you know, the bigger picture and the perspective and just, you know, the support that you guys provide each other. And that I'm actually able to like witness and feel myself just because it is like, Hey, let's, let's support each other. Let's, you know, expect support from our leaders, give support to those who come after us and just, you know, lift, lift each other up. Right. For sure. I completely agree. And with that spirit, if anybody wants to get a hold of you, um, are they able to do so? Yeah, for sure. And you can get in contact with me via LinkedIn, probably uh, the best way. Fabulous. Thank you. Um, yeah, Keshev uh, is fabulous. And I'll make sure that he has a link and we can link it down below. It's funny because I'm sure as I'm saying this, Riley, you're like, yeah, you asked me this before we started. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I know I'm, I'm telling, telling secrets, but no, I appreciate it. Um, I never want to put anybody on the spot. Like, yeah, you can contact me at my first name, one zero zero at hawkale.com. <laughs> no, no, but thank you. And I know that, you know, there's lots of things that people could reach out and talk to you about that we've covered here. Um, and who knows, who knows where you, you will take yourself. It's, it's a pretty fun career. You've made in a tremendous investment. You worked hard. You've had fun along the way. And like, thank you for coming back and sharing your experience with us. Thank you so much for having me. It was a good time. <laughs> You're a pro. All right. Have a good one. Bye.